Hey everybody, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I'm going to do a repair video, believe it or not. Not one that I've bought or got on trade. Somebody actually wants me to fix an item that they have. Which, I mean, you're going to eventually do anyways, right? So, um, not my forte, but uh, we'll get it done. It shouldn't be too difficult on this thing. It is a Yard Pro with a Kohler XT7 Courage engine on it. So, uh, it's, you pull it, it doesn't start. That's all I know about it so far. Obviously, it's pretty dirty. Blade, blade is dull. It looks like it slipped off the keyway down there. Got a lot of grass and stuff under it. Shouldn't, like I said, shouldn't be too difficult. Just needs a good old cleaning. Um, and it needs to run, obviously. That's uh, so the front drive self propel. In case you're wondering, Yard Pro looks exactly like Husqvarna Craftsman, that type, which is exactly what I thought it was. Figured it'd be a, didn't think it was a Husqvarna actually. I thought it would be a Lawn Boy because it has a Kohler engine on it. Because I asked what type of engine on it, and I was told that uh, the air filter had the screw on type. I'm like, aha, it's a Kohler. So, it will need an air filter. The air filter is pretty clogged on it. Let's see what else we have here. Gas. Yeah. We got a little gas in there. Just for kicks, I'll see if it starts without the air filter on it. Let me grab a uh, tripod right here. We'll grab the. See if this thing will work without the air filter. I'm gonna try a couple of things, and we're gonna go through the troubleshooting process. I have a feeling that. Uh, I don't know what I have a feeling because I know it was running one day and it wasn't the next so hopefully it's not a uh, um, blade or blade key or anything like that or flywheel key excuse me okay still a little carb cleaner up Tell you what, at the very least, it needs a uh, the blade needs to be re redone on it. I think it vibrates quite a lot at the deck. Got a dragonfly or something in here, but so what that tells me is that uh, the top jet's clogged, most likely on this. We've done a video on that before. We're gonna go through it step by step again. Not a big deal. Stick the cranks back up. Again. 
again. Try one more time. Say the crank this time. Tells me a lot right there, actually. Uh, auto choke quit on it. So I don't know if it's the thermostat that quit, if I just need to lube it up or what. But uh, auto choke quit on it. So uh, I got to grab some 10 mils and uh, at least take this cover, carburetor cover off real quick. See if I can fix this auto choke. I wonder if grime and dirt and grit and she just got stuck up in it because it's it's not working. So I have to investigate that. Uh, it's hoping to be an easy carb clean or top jet or something like that, but uh, the uh, choke choke's got stuck on it. So uh, hopefully I, I can free that thing up. We'll be in good shape. So let me take some 10 mils and I'll get down there and see what we got. Radio, it's kind of it's kind of getting late, so I've got some fading light here. But let me show you choke mechanism. Goes to this rod right here. I don't know how well I can show you. It goes to that rod over to this mechanism, which actually in turn goes across the engine over to the thermostat that's housed in the uh, oh, that's housed in the. Well, I can show that to y'all. Right there, that little rod goes into that little thermostat. And uh, that's what I'm going to lube up. I'm going to lube it up and see what happens with it. Alrighty, y'all, good news. Um, after a little bit of lube going back and forth, I got a hot engine right now. And it uh, looks like the choke is operating back the way that it should again. Now the only test is I gotta wait until the morning to see if this thing closes back up. If it closes back up, we're in business. If it doesn't, I don't know what we do. But as you can see it's operating freely now. It wasn't earlier. So it's not gonna be perfect, but it'll do the trick. All right, now we wait until the engine cools off. We'll give it another shot. See if we have anything good. Probably have to throw a fuel line on this too because I see it's leaking a little bit right over here. So, or that might be the lubricant I sprayed. I apologize, that's the lubricant I sprayed. So, we'll, uh, we'll address that in the morning. See if this choke's closed. All right, y'all, so I let it sit overnight and the choke vein was actually still open when I first got in the garage. I gave it about three pulls. It started later in the day now. The choke vein is still closed, it looks like. So let's see if it starts for us. back to it and see what it looks like my apologies y'all got sidetracked but uh, as you can see it did open up the vein there the problem is I don't think it's gonna restart for me and that's where the big problem lies Did 
start. That's good. So I think I fixed it. Look at what the air vein did after I restarted it. Again, all I did, this, this mower was running until it wasn't. So it's not like it's been sitting a while. I think what happened was uh, all the dirt, grime, and stuff got the choke vein stuck. Just need a little lube on it. So that's good. I'm going to let it sit. Give it a couple of days. And um, we'll see what happens. Next order of business, I'm just going to wash it up. I'm going to see if I can get the blade. We're going to look at the blade. Make sure it is all right. One thing I hated that I did is... I don't know how these covers come off because this is like a little beauty cover, which I've never really seen before. But I ended up breaking that those grill pieces on there. I put a couple screws in there, so it's not really that noticeable. But oh, with the way that this mower is taken care of, I don't think they're really going to care either way. <laughs> so let me get it over over in the pine straw over there. I'm going to check and see what uh, everything looks like in terms of... Uh, um, the blade and everything obviously all the wheels this thing's been well well used i'll say that much um might go ahead and give it a full service with the blade sharpen and oil change um realign the wheels i'm not going to tighten the wheels or put any new wheels on it because uh like i said if i don't have to put any parts on it and i don't have any time in it i'll charge maybe one hour of service which would be about 40 bucks Especially with the pull rope, and yeah, we'll be in good shape. So, let me go ahead and uh, let's look under it real quick. Let me get it over there and we'll check it out. All right, so let me show you all the blade on this thing. You see where the blade key and all that was all lopsided on this thing, and the little dimples are sheared off here. And of course, that's a it's a one piece shaft set up. Darn. So I don't think I can replace this little keyway thing without replacing the whole shebang. What I can do, I gotta sharpen the blade anyways. To the naked eye, it doesn't look bent. It just looks like they put it off center. I just make sure to put it as center as I can back on it. Of course, I've started bleeding. Uh, let me show you how bad this grass is jammed up in here, though. I don't know how. I don't know if y'all can see that. I've already pulled out some of it, so I got to take the cover off. I'll go ahead and put a, a, a filth or a catch pan under it and drain the oil out. I'll give her some new oil while I'm at it. Pull rope, all that good stuff. Like I said, it's only going to be about an hour, hour of work and really no parts involved with it except for some oil, which could definitely need it changed anyways. And a pull rope, so I think I'm gonna charge her about forty to fifty dollars on the repair. Um, it's kind of why I don't really do repairs either, because I don't charge a ton of money. Because I mean, the lawnmower itself is probably a hundred dollar mower if I clean it up. So you know, it's really not that bad. One other reason why this thing is got grass all jammed up in the self-propel mechanism is because it's missing one of these covers so that has something to do with it and I'll just knock some of that off I'll make this thing look pretty and send it on back down I will clean this grass out of it though um, so once this oil drains 
I'll put a new air filter on it. A couple other things. Ow. Whatever that was was hot or sharp, one of the two. And you see, I'm just pulling it out. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. I'll be sitting here all day, but anyways, I'm gonna sharpen the blade, put it back on, uh, clean out from under this deck a little bit more, change the oil in it, put a new air filter on it, let it sit overnight, see if we can start it, run it, let it sit for a few hours, see if we'll start, we can start it, run it, and then uh, we'll be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to work on that, run on time crunch here, trying to get done before something else. And uh, I'll show you all uh, after, I'll show you the grass and stuff under it. And uh, we'll get this thing back down on its side as well. Alrighty, I'm going to take this front cover off. It's just a 5 16 it looks like. Let's see. I got to go get a little wrench or something or a ratchet and socket. But let me show you. Here's the model number of the engine that we're working on. It's 173 cc so it's a little bit bigger than i think a little bit bigger than the 149s i think that's what the original what originally comes on these are kind of the default engine so it's not made in china it's crafted in china <laughs> it was made uh 311 2009 so about 11 years old has seemed to held up decently well apart from that little choke deal um, gosh, if this was a, uh, Kohler Courage Rider engine, holy moly. But, let me grab a socket, and we'll take this off, we'll see how bad this grass is. Alrighty, I got the cover off, you ready to look? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo. Chock full. I can't believe self propel still worked. I remember seeing mixed mowers had a very similar deal with one that he had. Okay. Obviously they would need the cover in order to prevent that from happening again. But I think they're just looking to get this thing fixed. So here we go, We're back on. on this thing is that this Kohler engine is so big that it's intruding on the where you usually take the self propel screw. If this is a Briggs, the Briggs are a lot smaller. I think these some of these engine manufacturers are like, hey, let's just make these engines massive so that it looks like they're very powerful.
All right, on to the bench. We're gonna put a pull rope in it. All right, let's put a pull rope in this thing. If you've got one of these, if it has a cover on it, like I've got on this one, it should be some T15 screws on the top. Of course, I broke the ones in the back, so I put some Phillips on it. But T15s. I mean, that's all that's holding it on, really, you know. Alright. There we go. So that's all. Alright. So for the pull rope, one thing I actually like about colors. 310 millimeters and you're done. You gotta get around the gas tank though. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Alright, we got the 10 mil and the 5 stick tank, so if I need it. So one thing about cola, they're very easy. I got sniffles or something, sorry guys. They're very easy to put a uh, pull rope on. So, yeah, it looks like there's two 5 six tanks down in these holes right here. Some of them don't have that, but I guess these 173? Yeah, 17. I think it's a 173. Yep, 173 cc's got it. Alright, should come off now. Yeah. Take the gas cap off, sorry. Gas cap. But that's just a beauty cover. Pull rope comes off just like so. Beautiful. I don't know if it's fell on the ground. But. Anyways, we'll see what fell on the ground in just a second. Pull rope mechanism is good. What I'm going to do is take this thing out, pull it all the way out. lock it down with some vice grips and then we'll take this out and replace it. Well I'll tell you one thing, this doesn't look as fun to uh, put in, but we're going to try to fish this one in. It's like you gotta, it's like a such a weird angle. I don't want to let this thing go. Such a weird angle. Uh -oh. Don't let it wind back on you. Whatever you do. Because it comes out. At such a weird angle. Let's see if I can push it in like this. There's hardly any 
gear there. Let's see if I can grab a tool or some wire or something to fish it in there. These things are always a pain to try to get in there. Thing is, and if I can shove it through here, what's gonna happen is, let's see if I can fish it through here. Sometimes you can come backwards with them and have better luck. Let's see what we got. Are you able to fish it through there? We got something through there. There we go. I think we got it now. Bag on process it seems to get these things through. Eh, we're not through yet. I've tried many different methods and not one I have found is an easy one. It's like one works better than the other one time and one works better than the other another time and so it's like how to put a pull rope in I don't know they all work differently <laughs> let's see I've got something through there I found a flashlight the struggle is real y'all the struggle is real all right I've got it's partially through there. I can see see a little bit. I think I got it that time. We're getting there. We're getting there. Need enough to where I can grab it. With some needle nose pliers. much better. Okay. 
come on. All right, so now we've got to get it through that hole, which is easy. Apologize, my fingers have been in the way the whole time. All right, but y'all kind of saw what I did there, right? I just took a pick tool through this and then out. Now what I'm going to do is roughly, I'll back y'all out, I'll measure the length of the old row and I'm going to add a few inches because this one has been uh, modified, if you know what I mean. So. This is something you could easily do at home. Again, I'm going to go about maybe another six inches. can always cut it off. But as you can see, that's about how much more I've put on it. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it off. My color is I actually put like a little area to put these. Into? I could just pop that down a little bit. That should hold it relatively decent. And now I'm going to might have to cut this end of the rope off a little bit, but all you got to do is feed it into this. Get some needle noses. Just pull it up. And uh, I gotta find the other part of the pull rope. Here it is. Oh, I think I did it wrong. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, did I? Yeah, I did it wrong. Uh, let me get a cleaner end on it real quick. That didn't work. And we'll see if it works. All right. Feed it through your little T handle, and then feed it through your locking portion of the handle. That's how we do it. And we can knot this up. Hope y'all are still with me here. If 
Like I said, I like doing two knots, extra insurance. Pull it. You have a little bit of extra, you can just tuck in there. I don't mind having a little bit of extra just in case the knot comes out. And there we go. We got the pull rope on it. Y'all saw me do the, y'all saw me how, y'all saw me take it off. I'm going to put it back together off camera. I'm going to wash it and then we'll have a final look. Alrighty, well, I think the repair is done on this one. Um, washed it. Looks a whole lot better now, doesn't it? Um, like I said, that's a Yard Pro, but it's basically the exact same as a Craftsman or a Husqvarna. Um, no difference whatsoever except it's a different color and it's got a different label on it. So I put a new air filter in it. Um, simply lubing up the uh, um, choke arm like I showed y'all earlier in the video has seemed to help this thing out a lot. Um, it started without any assistance at all today so I've done it multiple times. And uh, this is a warm start, but I've been doing it cold, warm, whatever. I might let it sit for a couple days because I actually have the luxury of letting this one sit for a few days before I bring it back to the customer. Um, see if any other, you know, issues come up with it. But let me show you that it runs real quick. So the situation with the blade, the blade was just off a little bit. As y'all saw in that earlier clip, the blade was just slightly off. Um, I centered the blade back, sharpened it, put it back on, and it is smooth as glass now. So that's awesome. Um, I'm glad it's not a bent blade. So, yeah, I usually don't do repairs, but like I said, I didn't have to buy any parts for it. I probably got maybe an hour's worth of work in it. So... I'll make a you know forty fifty dollars off of the repair. Like I said, the mower itself. Now that it's cleaned up, it'll probably be a hundred and thirty hundred forty dollar mower. But before it was looked rough. Um, like I said, new oil, new air filter, sharpened blade. About an hour's worth of work in and out. Money that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, little small project. I always like to do the small stuff in between big things like riding mowers. Um, just to kind of give myself a little bit of a breather and realize that it doesn't take that much to get things going most of the time. <laughs> but, yeah, so, um, like I said, it looks a lot better. And uh, I appreciate y'all watching as always. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Um, troubleshooting this Kohler. Just clean it up, making it look pretty again. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. You can see me at Ellis Mowers 09 on Instagram and Facebook and right here on YouTube on the next video. See you then.